Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It On. We have a lot to do in the motor carriage, so let's let's get started. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. This must be the infernal machine that toy from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I'm going to start with the toolbox so I can get access to the pry bar, because I'm assuming I need to keep it. Uh, so pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. All right, take the red tip pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Cold and heavy, like truth. You feel like you're reunited with truth once more. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. All right, take the rubber handle chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. And take the hand cranked flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well made. Police issue, blue. Lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. All right, push in the pull out toolbox. The pull out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. Run your fingers over one of the steering levers. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Hi uh, Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? All right, ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He turns the preheater on, waits, takes out his keys and says, He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious carriage. Press engine start. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps and the engine of the Caprice Canada comes to life with a whiny growl. I press the button labeled headlights. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. All right, close the door. Right, do these give me any bonuses? No, it's just a tool. The red tip pry bar has Carson T heavy duty engraved just below the handle. It is satisfyingly heavy, and perhaps one of the most useful tools to carry around. Then chain cutters. The meanest looking pair of cutters you've ever seen. Made in Gottwald by Walsherm work zuge. No chain, wire, nor barred fence will ever stand in your way again. They look hungry, ready to chew steel. And a flashlight, a police flashlight bearing the logo of Grunstellung Ra RAO or RAO. The small dynamo packed inside this handheld illumination device theoretically gives you the ability to produce a tiny amount of electricity anytime, anywhere. I like the design of it. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. Let me click there, trying to get in front of it. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is, Revachol West. Now there's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at this shimmering street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, look around you. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stop lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez. He 
He smells the air and says, uh, Where are we on this? Point to the halogen map. Let me see. He takes a ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. He says, his finger near the top of the map, on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. Seems nice. No, it does not. Lieutenant says without optimism. Alright, look at the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. Not bad. Not bad for what? You don't even know what it means yet. <laughs> Alright, what about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. You count 216 perforations. Considering that nice, large number, a wave of pride washes over you. Though you can't say why, precisely. What about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Three? That's it? That's it. Hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? Point to the dots on the watermark. Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. Son, here is where we score your life performance. You better hope it's good. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? Do you really think I have any idea? Fair point. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see... Wow, more than 200! Uh, 216, to be exact. It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Lieutenant nods with evident respect. I used to be good. Uh, that's some solace, I guess. Uh, what's the last number? Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. Uh, so I'm a killer? For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. He says, declining to elaborate. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. He points to your yellow gardening gloves. <laughs> it's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Well, thanks for this. Conclude. The lieutenant nods. Okay, let's go. Put the ledger away. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. He presses remote control on the key. Well, so we used to be a pretty competent cop. Based on what we... Oh, cool. Okay, it has all of our information here. I don't know what these mean. Superstar, boring, sorry. Fascist, moralist, ultra-liberal and communist, good cop, bad cop, seven, honor, zero. Huh. Alright, let's get on the radio. Get on the horn.
call the station. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, tap on the fuel preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. Now, now, let's see enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they are mesmerizing. They are also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. All right, pick up the radio. The frequency tableau lights up and the green button labeled prime line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Uh, hi, Alice. This is the officer from the 41st precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, precinct 57. How may I assist you? A voice replies on the radio. Uh, can you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. A ten four, station forty one. I've got urgent business. Over. Ten four, message received. Ten five, relay message. What's your status? Over. Uh, just reporting in. Over. Ten eighteen, state your message, sir. I. I need to report my badge missing. Ten nine, over. My badge. I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Ten four, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to ten twenty two the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? A dry force, dry voice, not force, asks in the background. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Say nothing. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says, fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. 10 for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Alright. So we just leveled up. I'm going to put a point into my thoughts here. Unlock this bad boy. Because we have another thought, White Morning, that I want to internalize. So I've already read the description for it. It's going to give me minus one authority, which I already have minus, what, two? So that's no good. I can't unequip that, eh, whatever. So we'll just go back to this. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Who are all these people? <laughs> Super Cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Can y'all please just stop saying lost his badge for a moment? He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. <laughs> Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Person was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. Say nothing. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. You can hear laughter in the background. Enough with this now. 
I have other things to discuss. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. The room roars with laughter. Uh oh. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. I bet you it's back at the precinct. Oh fuck. I mean, we can try to convince them. Convince them that you didn't lose your gun. But even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. No, of course I didn't lose my fun. A gun. Screw it. I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't lose his gun. Or his fun, whatever that means. <laughs> Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> He laughs. Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. The fuck do you need a gun for? Look at the pythons on your arms. You are a gun. The biggest one in the world. <laughs> oh. Request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the plasma gun. Uh, whisper to the lieutenant. Kim, what are you packing? It's a single shot kill A9. An armistice to be precise. Speaking to the radio. It's a single shot armistice kill A9. Over. Says it's a kill uh, 9 mm armistice. Armistice? What? Is he a fucking. Clearly he doesn't have his villier anymore. Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> the man succumbs to laughter again. This isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here made him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't fuck. He lost his ass because he still got his wiener. <laughs> oh man. I'm not going to. Ask him. <sighs> Sergeant Dorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Alright, so number two, if I was in this situation, is how I would respond. Not as coarse as this. I left it at his mama's after I screwed her all night. Tell him that. That's a negative. I'm not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. <laughs> the prick ate mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <laughs> sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? <laughs> this takes me back a little bit. Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <clears throat> Sergeant Orson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. Okay. Tell him I'm sorry. It was just bad. Nah, well... Hmm. Hey, if you don't like the fallout, maybe don't screw with the firewalker. Mac, like he says uh, you shouldn't have antagonized the firewalker in the first place. Who? Huh? The disbelief in Vic Mayer's voice is overwhelming. Satellite officer V. Fire Walker. Um, I'm afraid he might be referring to himself as Firewater, sir. Firewater? He's lost it. Fuck it. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters. Satellite officer. I heard him, and I'm on it. Ten four affirmative. Officer is in pursuit of his firearm. They're static. Oh god, I. Ah. The man is fighting back tears. Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. I'm in dire need of financial assistance. Ten four, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. Right, uh, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. Uh, the operator turns back to you. Okay, I heard you. No funds. 
Anything else, sir? Over. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I like to discuss. Uh, okay, 10 4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. Uh, what's there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. I think we know that he's not. 10 4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Oh, hold on. Are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got the 10 12 visitors present here. Over. I want to know if you got my badge's description right in your report. Can you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revisholian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? Then for well, that's uh... Does he actually want something, or is he hell bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCN. For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. So I'm wondering, if we solved 219 cases, I'm wondering how just good of a police officer we were, considering their their reaction to us. Sir, satellite officer Vikmar says. I heard him. So, um, was there anything else? Any news about my, um, family? Then, um, excuse me, sir. Over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. I just thought you might have heard of them. That's all. No, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. Alright, so I'm not going to say three. Uh, please refer to me with my full name in the future. The nine repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Over. Please just say my name, Jules. Uh... What? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Come on, just give me my name, man. Alright, yeah, let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. 10-10. Transmission completed. Standing by. Over. End call with the 41st. What's all that? 10-10. Over and out. The static ends with a loud click, then everything is silent in the cabin. Well, I pick up the radio again. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? The operator greets you through the static. Uh, can you run a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me? Sir, officer. What's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. So E50, 100, 1000. The make and model of the armor is Fairweather T500 VE. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, is an inter isolari law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the moral intern diadem, alongside EPIS and the coalition government. I need you to connect me to a civilian. A Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? I Kim. Didn't Gar give you Sylvie's number? Yes. Hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. The lieutenant takes a look at his notes. Received. Hold on, officer. Wait patiently. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed.
me, sir. I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. She finally returns. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Uh, hello, this is the police calling. I have some more questions for you about your last days at work. Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? She recognizes your voice almost immediately. You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. Well, that's conflicting. Uh, you quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. You can hear her tense up on the other side. Why not? Okay, did you leave because of Gart? What? No, why would you even think that? She stops abruptly. He told me you asked. he asked you out. Are you saying it didn't happen? Please, don't bring Gart into this. It's none of your business. Yeah, I didn't mean to really go down this, this line of questioning. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. It's actually a very common thing even nowadays. Uh, people go and buy houses and then quote renovate them and rip all the copper wiring out and then try and sell them again. They fix it back up and try and pawn it back off as a you know a fixed up house at a higher cost, but there's no no copper wiring in the house. Um, and then even tenants, people will go rent a place, strip all the copper wiring out of the houses, and then just leave. So the land the landlord is out. Well, they have to pay for. Your repairs obviously then they're you know missing all the wiring in the house copper is very it's a very valuable metal uh, she clears her throat people don't have the money to have the cables put in again they use the union's phone or the one on the coast so the union has a phone and there's one further down the coast got it it was someone else we'll find them sooner or later officer it just might take a while lieutenant makes a note but why well, I guess, yeah, but why didn't you call? Didn't a corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the corpse. What does this Union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. You can hear her adjust the receiver in her hand. And what do you mean by that? You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. She seems to be looking for words. Wait, Kim. Lower your microphone. Is she speaking truth? The union is the law around here. Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the dock workers' union. He looks around. Words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. Tell me, why exactly did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks? <clears throat> instead of calling us. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. Uh, what others? The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. Her voice is resigned and weak. Okay, I understand. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. You hear static. Her chin rub against the receiver. Or, I guess, rubs. I see. Don't worry about it. I understand. You do? Oh. What else can I do for you? She sounds relieved. Uh, next question. Yeah, go on. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. My badge is missing. Uh, have you seen it anywhere? Oh, 
No, I haven't, sorry. Real policemen have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Uh, Kim doesn't have a uniform, and he seems real to me. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. There are officers who wear the signature Perseus black uniforms to the highest ranks in the RCM and end up buried in them as well. Others do it more casually. Looks like you're one of them. Have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exasperated. I showed you my gun. When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, off of that, people don't like that. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, cause these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding while you were screaming, spit flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some in his food. I don't think he touched it after. Okay, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Why would I threaten to kill myself? I mean, look at this world. I would love to stay. There is silence on the other end of the line. Uh, uh, yes. What happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead. Saying things like, big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. She sighs. Have you seen my policeman uniform? Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. Well, I know where my coat's at, so... Uh, do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. There's an uncomfortable pause. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? She doesn't sound like she's actually that sorry. I think I got everything I need. Thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. Wait, why does she seem so angry with you? Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the whirling in rags when she was still working there. Oh uh, wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skewer thing happened. It just made me want to quit. The static sighs again. What skewer thing? The stuffed bird. The great skewer. You threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. Yeah, why do I always end up screwing everything up? <laughs> That's what it seems like so far. It was a pretty bird. There since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. We call her Scotty. There's genuine sadness in her voice. So you're telling me that I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting. Union guys grabbing my ass. Kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... She pauses. Go on. I want to know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. 
Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I, I hate it now. Hold on. Which song? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry. Sorry about the song. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about being the most boring person alive and how everyone leaves you because you're just so boring. Well, I am sorry. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Okay, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. Yeah, I am truly sorry for everything, Sylvie. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. But when I spoke to Gart, it seemed like he thought you left because of him. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like Gart. I really do. Didn't he cross the line when he asked you out? No. I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. It was just bad timing. With the corpse and all that. There's a pause. You can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. <sighs> I should have told him maybe. I can tell him. Okay, but please don't mess it up. Please don't take out your gun or something. What else did I sing besides the OO? I'm looking for a song. All, all sorts of things. Some disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. Maybe you can help me identify this one particular song. Which one would that be? One that was really sad. Sad? I think the one you mean is the smallest church in San San. Richard, that right up. Her voice carries a tone of disappointment. Interesting. You still have to find it, however. Right. Thank you for talking with me. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? I'm not the radio for now. 57, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see as... Alright, we're done with that. Alright, I'm gonna call the episode here, and the next one we will... Oh, what do we have? Lonesome. Long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake. The frozen eye at the center of the district. Then... Past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Learning cat for perception raised to five, and speed gives one psyche. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Wait, there are co copo types? Yes. Guess what's yours? Uh, cool cop. No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Well, it's only courteous to be apologetic after what we put that poor girl through. Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. Okay, okay. What are the other capo types? Oh, you know. Apocalypse. Superstellar. The advanced interesting cop. Liquid shadow cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, 
Here we go. Um, won't the other copper types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copper type from sorry to anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info, or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That won't happen. Alright, so we got a new thought. Rigorous self-critique. Minus one authority, embarrassment to the party. You're one sorry piece of crap. A cop penitent. A flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of, feudal, of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at the Mazovian show trial, ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be darn sure it was your own fault. Do it. Really criticize yourself. Who knows? You might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. Alright, that doesn't sound great. Um, still a ways from leveling up for another thought slot. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Next episode, we'll go back into the Whirling and Rags. We'll speak to Gart about Sylvie. I'm going to see if I can use the pry bar on that blue metal door in the kitchen. And then I'm not sure where we're going to go after that. Either way, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.